Okay, good morning everyone to Mamu Javis, and this is our grade seven experience in the matter of arithmetic. We'll keep on the series of factors and multiples, and in our last class, we had covered certain aspects, and I told us that I have a take, as a way I take the topic, and I started with prime numbers, but today I'm coming back to now try to look at factors. I said that there was a particular method I didn't touch because I had in mind to teach you a particular concept. Once I've taught that concept, I'll teach you the fourth method. But just to bring our hearts back to the topic, let's look at the four, the three methods we considered in our last class. So I'll just say find all the factors of um, find all the factors of 72. We said there are three methods we can use. Method one, I simply will write the multiples out 72, will be equal to 72 times one, or one times 72, and two times 36, three times 24, four times uh, 18, uh, which one now? Six times 12. Uh, the next one will be what? So eight times nine. Is there another possibility? The next one will take me back to 12. And so with this method, I've exhausted all the possibilities. And what I simply need to do is to write them. So factors of 72 will simply be listed there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So you see, like it's more like a U shaped factor list one, two, three, four, six, eight, uh, nine, 12, 18, 24, 36, and what? 72. It's more like a multiple method. So, once you can write out uh, your, in, in the drawing from your primary school knowledge, it will be easy for you to get your final answer. Now, that's one method. There is another method, method two which is more like the factor three. So I start off by writing 72 here, and I can split 72 into what? Two times uh, 36. I can split 36 into what? Two times 18. I can split 18 into two times nine, and I can split nine into three times three. I see that mm -hmm. into three times three. So. With this method, I'm going to list my factors out now. How do I list my factors? I will start with one. I'm seeing a two. Okay, let me start with what I can see first. This method, you this is what you can see. I can see two, I can see uh, there must be one. I'm seeing two, I'm seeing three, I'm seeing nine, I'm seeing 18, I'm seeing 36, and I'm seeing 72. Now, what are the other ones I have not seen? If I can see two, look at them, I'm seeing two occurring twice. So that means they can, there must be what? There must be what? Four. I can see two occurring three times. That means there must be what? Eight. Are we together? I can see two and three. That means there must be six. So look at it. Is there any other one I've missed out? Now, if you look at it again, with that, I can say four times six, I will have 24. And I think with this arrangement, I've gotten it all out. Everything I need to get, I've gotten it all out. So that's for method one and method two. So let's see what method three will look like. Method three is, is a method that students seem to fall in love with. I call it the prime colon method. This is 72. Two divided to be 36. Two divided to be 18. Two divided to be nine. Three divided to be three. And three divided to be one. So how does this method work? This is how I use this method. You start by picking them. I have one. Then I exhaust all the tools. I'm seeing two. I see four. I see eight. 
Now, I go to three. I'm seeing three. I'm seeing what? Nine. Now, I'm seeing two and three. That means there must be six. I'm seeing six and four. I mean, I'm seeing six and three. That means there must be 18. You can also do that from here. This times, this times, this is also possible. Then I, I'm also seeing six and four. That means there must be 24. And finally, or rather, I'm seeing six. I'm seeing 18 times two. That means that it must be what, 36. And finally, I'm going to have 72. So when you're done with this method, the next thing you need to do is to write them orderly. You discover that because you're just coming into grade seven, the first method I have done seems to give you the answers faster. You just list them out quickly. But I would expect you not to remain in that method. So that's that for a quick recap of what we had done in the previous class. So we'll go to something more interesting. A quick reminder here that our textbook for this class is the New General Mathematics for grade seven or JSS one. And I just picked a question from exercise 3A on page 15 of our textbook, question number two. And it says, which of the numbers two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine are factors of the following numbers? So we're gonna pick them one after the other and look at, now look at A. It says what? 27. 27. In this question, there are particular about the factors you must use. The factors you must use must be only these ones. So even if you get other factors, you can't use them. It must be this one. These are the factors you're only allowed to use. So I can go with my, uh, whichever approach I want to use, I can go with my, um, I'm going to vary the methods. For this one, let me use this method. Three go here, nine. Three go here, uh, three. Three go here, one. So you discover that the factors I will have, the factors of 27, based on this description I'm giving, will be what? I'm saying three. Three times three will give me nine. We had said that a factor. A number is always a factor of itself, but in this setup, because we are restricted to the kind of factors we use, we cannot say 27 is a factor. So that's the reason why only three and nine are treated as what? Factors. So we go to um, question G. I'm gonna use another method to handle this now. It says 120. Question B, uh, 120. So how do I do that? I'll use this method of one times 120, two times 60, three times 40, if you three divide that, four times 30, eight times 15. Uh, is there another possibility I can get? Yes, I can have 10 times what, 12. And what else can I get? I can get, uh, I have 10 times 12. I can have 12 times 10. I can have 24 times five. Is there a possibility? Okay, let's say no. Let's say no. I think there's another possibility I should have had there. Uh, I think at this point, I should have six times 20. And then I should have eight times 15. And then I should have 10 times 12. Uh, 10 times 12 times 10 is the same, so I avoid repetition. And I'm going to have um, 24. I think I should have 15. We can already have 8 times 15, so I can't, I can't repeat. I can't write one thing twice. So I will have 24 times 5. With that, I think I've exhausted all the possibilities. Now, I'm going to use this to mirror what I have. So factors of 120 will be equal to what? I can see, I check, I, I see two, I see three, I see four, I see five, I see six, I see eight. So those are the only factors I can have based on the conditions I've been given. So I'm gonna have two, three, four, five, six, and eight. So these are the factors 
I can have with respect to the description I have been given. So you can use any of these methods to handle the exercise there. I think with that, we can go to a new concept.